Hey there, I'm Bogdan Budaka and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining for another mind workout. I do hope that you're enjoying the summer and that you also keep safe and you keep learning. So today I thought that we could go over another cool little problem. This will be the tight one election. Uh, I have to admit that this has been pretty difficult, but it's also been pretty interesting. So it's actually got nested a few more other problems, like for example, we need to implement the sorting algorithm and also uh, use recursion. So this has been very interesting and, uh, I, and this will be my attempt at trying to explain this uh, to myself and to whoever is interested. So I hope I'll do it justice. And uh, of course, whenever you feel that you can continue on your own, please pause the video and do so. Well, yeah, let's dig right in. Uh, if maybe you've seen my previous video for the runoff election, if not, I'll link to it as well. Uh, it's quite similar. So each, uh, each of the voters does get like a ballot and you can uh, you can express your preferences for the candidates but this one is a bit sorry about that this one is a bit different because uh, it actually compares head to head each of the each of the candidates so a against b a against c for example and b against c you can read up some more the cs50 page for this is very detailed it's very useful i'll try to have a quick go through how this works as well but you can read up more here. Also, Wikipedia is a very good source. So you have the ranked pairs. I'll link to all this as well in the description. So this will also. So when I mean head to head, this will be. Uh, this will imply the Condorcet method or the Condorcet criterion. So how this works is so we'll compare each of the each of the. So we'll compare A with B, for example. Let's say let's say there are seven voters. B. Uh, let's say A beats A B. Uh, let's say five to two. Okay, and B B. Uh, no, four and also beats uh, possible. Psycho, but it's fine. Okay, let's say six, one. Okay. Basically, we'll just look at each of the candidate pairs and see how they fare against each other. So then we will we will uh, count those votes and we will see who has the stronger win. You you'll that'll that'll make more sense. Uh, maybe if you look at the problem more further down in the video, I hope. So um. Have a look on the Wikipedia page. You can see there are three phases to, to the Tidemon method. So the tally, that's where we can the vote, count the votes. Then we sort, and what we sort here is um, we will we will arrange our our candidates in pairs. So for example, if candidate zero, the first candidate wins over candidate one, and um, it will have the strongest win. So for example, out of seven votes, um, candidate zero will have five, and candidate one will have two. That uh, that means that we'll have the strength of, for example, five, and if uh, the next pair has only a strength of four, so the candidate, uh, the the, can the winning candidate wins by four to three, so that that'll be that'll be less than five to two, so it'll be superior the five to two win. Okay, so you'll see that 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 makes more more sense as we go along. So uh, yeah, this I I hope this makes. Kind of a uh, kind of a uh, bit of sense. So then, uh, then after we sort after we sort these out, so we will we will have from starting from the strongest win, and in, in decreasing order. So that's where we'll use our sorting algorithm. Then we will create like a graph uh, a graph like structure basically. And we will have different data structures. We will have arrays and two D arrays basically, but with with the locked two D array, which you will see we will have kind of a graph structure. And we will have to check for uh, for the edges between the vertexes, the nodes, not to not to create a cycle. You can see that here. I think on the yeah. So here, this is not a cycle, but yeah. If if this is a cycle, okay. So if each of the candidates is being pointed at, so to say, okay. So you will see, you'll see how how we can get get around that. I think we can just go ahead and start looking at some code. I have the initial version here and uh, the completed version here, so it will help me along because it's uh, it is a bit dense, so this will help me along. 
I did I did tweak it a bit so we're not using the CS50 library so basically just needed to use char arrays for strings and uh, uh, request user input a bit differently but it's nothing that we haven't done before so I think we can just I'm just gonna get code and we can have a go through it so here we just make a, a constant for the max num maximum number of candidates and that's nine and then we have a preferences uh, array to the array and it's spent nine per nine an integer an int uh, an int array and then we have a bool array locked uh, for nine per nine again and then we have a struct structure to define a pair and it has uh, two integers winner and loser so this will be our this will be our pairs and you'll see in a bit what that means then we have a uh, is an array of char arrays so an array of strings here this is uh these are the number of strings so the number of candidates and these are the number of characters for each uh, string for each char array for each name this should be plenty and uh, then we have a an array that takes in pairs so it's a pairs array and the length of it is basically half of the candidates that's what this then we have a couple of integers pair count and candidate count so then we have the functions that we'll, we'll need to implement ourselves and these are a couple more functions that I created so help us out with uh, with the lock pairs but we'll I declared them here so we can use them in our code so here we start our, our um, program check for the argument count here we get the candidate count so First argument is the program itself, so we deduct that. Then we check for um, for the candidate count, or that's correct. Then populate the candidates uh, candidates name array. So we just make a loop, copy starting from the first. So we will have our candidates in order. Actually, we populate the candidates array. Then we actually initialize the the locked array. And we set every value to false. So, for example, if we'll have three candidates for for our example here, the locked array will look like this. The array, so everything will be false. Then we have another fair count. Fair count is the one we initialize. We declare here. We initialize here with zero. Create another int variable here order count we requested we request that input from the user and then we query for votes so we make a for loop for the voters and we create for each of them a ranks array which is the length of the candidate count then make another nested loop for loop and we request the name of the candidate and we start from rank one rank two rank three so on then we send that to the vote function the first one we need to will need to implement and if that is false so basically it won't validate our our candidate name it will end otherwise we'll, uh, we will continue and then you'll see that we'll go to our second function here for each of the voters we'll pass the ranks array for each of the voters to our record, uh, record preferences uh, function okay so so far so good uh, the ranks so this is this uh, each of the voters will have this array basically what this means is uh, for example if uh, so we have it here so for for the first voter this will be zero two one okay so index zero candidate index two and index one zero two so zero over two and one and two wins over one and one doesn't win over anybody okay so that'll be the that'll be the ranks array for the first uh, for the first voter so if we go on down to our vote function here we need to start a for loop so dates so we're just looking for the candidate that's provided 
the vote so the vote function takes in an integer here which would be the number zero first then the name of the candidate and then the ranks array and this will come in here so rank means that for example this will be their first choice okay this will be the candidate and this is the array here we're looking at candidate name that equals zero that means it's true and we okay. populate the array okay just gonna I hope this makes sense. So, the first, yeah, the first, uh, their first selection will be zero, for example. Time, so we'll come in here. So the first position index zero in our ranks array will equal the index of the candidate that matched that name. Okay. Just send it in in our in our array. So if it's the first candidate, it'll be zero here. Then if it's the last candidate or third candidate, in our case, it'll be here, and so on. Okay. So after that's done, the record preferences. So record preferences, update preferences even on voters ranks. Basically here I think we will need we need a nested for loop. Have a look. For loop. Starting from the next one over, yeah. Use I plus. Is. And return. So what we do here? Preference. So if we have three candidates, it will be something like this. This might be quite for runoff. So this will be our preference array initially. So for example, we look at preference. So this will be our ranks. For example, the first ranks we will look at. Rank, ranks is zero, ranks one, RJ from one, preferences of zero, two, e one, because we increment. What this means is that candidate zero, so can, first row row zero will be candidate zero, then candidate one, candidate two. The columns will be the other candidates, so for example, candidate zero wins over candidate two. So zero two will be incremented, and that will be one. Okay, and and basically so on. So then then we look at uh, I plus starts from one, then it's two. Looks at zero two. Because zero wins over one as well. Then it will one. Candidate over candidate. Increment. Okay. Basically, this will keep adding on and so on as as uh, as the case may be. And this is how this is how uh, the preferences uh, to the array works. And we just uh, add that in there. Then we start 
Using our pairs. First function is add pairs. Here, four pairs of pens. Start over. Our preference. So we need a nest. There's pair count. Oh, we also need to. Okay. What we're doing here, we check for each. So if we start from We'll go. Reference. Reference. And then here we look for the two references way. For example, for zero, so let's take zero and one because that will make more sense. Zero, one, be zero and one. compare that with one and zero. With one and this one is one. So pair count is now zero. We get the first pair count, and we the winner it will be I. The loser will be K, which is so for example our pair will look like this, zero one. Candidate zero wins over candidate one. Candidate one doesn't win over candidate zero. That's what this does. Hope it makes it quite straightforward. Wondering if there's anything else that I could explain. Then we, yeah, so we start from pair, pair can zero and then we increment it because we added the first pair, for example. Once we've added the first pair, the next time around, we'll look at pair one. Okay, because it will be one now. That pair one. one. So we adding the pairs if this if this checks example where this isn't the case let's go with uh, let's go with for example one and uh put one and two so if this is one and this is two one and one and two zero and one one so this will so this that will be false, so that won't happen. This pair won't won't actually happen. It will be in reverse. So and this will be looked at one, two. Uh, so when this will be two and this will be one. So two one. That's greater than one two. So which is true, then our pair will be okay. Hope that makes sense. So we, we played with uh, with two, one here, and then we checked this condition. And in reverse, one, two, that wasn't true, nothing happened. That won't be one of the pairs. That's basically it. It'll be basically an array. Like, imagine, let's imagine zero. And so on. So this will be the pairs array. Okay. That's how I imagine it in my head. So that's the pairs. Well, here we need to sort the pairs. Basically, here to be honest, I just uh, I just look at the, at the insertion sort, for example, and I plugged in our values and I just used that code. I actually found a very cool uh, article on dev.to. I will link to it, of course, and uh, here's the code for insertion, insertion sort in, uh, in C. So I just got this code here, for example. 
And so, of course, try to understand it first. And want to have a quick go go at it. Imagine, for example, our array is two, two, one, three. And if we have a go at it, our array will be here. N will be three because we have three elements. First time. I equals array of one. So that one. Then we get into the while loop. Basically, here we check we check the values that are next to each other, and then we flip them around. If so, out. That's true. The array of j, so array of zero, is greater than the key. That's true. So this value is greater than the value that comes after it. Then we get get into the while loop. So array of one equals to array of zero. So Minus one. Then exit and we get here array of zero equals one. So one down here. Then for array of two. This is and then array of j, array of one. Greater than the key, which is three, that's false. So we here, and then array of so the key, array of two is here. Three, so that's already there. So that's that's the end of it. So just just try to go through the code, understand. Maybe you're already familiar with this. Uh, personally, I find that I always need more need more uh, practice on this, especially recursion as well. So yeah. That's what we'll need to do here. Just paste this code. So basically, I just changed the values here. So here is pair. There will be. That's our pair. First, we can leave as they are, but here, actually, pair reference. Okay. So key is here, pairs i and pairs j, the value before it, i minus one. Pair these values next to each other. Oh, So we just we just compare the values, the values that are next to each. Then we just go through the rest of the algorithm. And that's basically what I did. And maybe I could, I could have started from the, the tail of the array, but basically I did the trick to reverse. So now everything is in order, but it's ascending. I made it decent. So I actually made the um, pairs. Bye. 
Okay, so I hope I got this. So uh, yeah, basically what, what we were doing here is just, I just created a temporary array and here we just start from the end. So for example, if i is zero, it's, and we have for pair count is five, for example, we have five pairs. So we start from index five minus zero minus one. So from index four, so that's the tail of the array. And we pass that into the first value. Basically, we switch the array around and then we move it back into our initial array pairs. Yeah, maybe it's a bit redundant, but yeah, this is what I've gotten into. Uh, so yeah, that's done. So here's. Is this anymore? Okay. Maybe other comments would help. And look, this is where where we come across recursion. So again, this this is uh, very helpful. So a couple of videos from uh, from this uh, S50. Maybe you're already super familiar with this. Uh, also, what I've done so. Uh, I've actually actually I posted a question on the on the Discord for CS50, and I actually got this answer from this gentleman called Nick Napoli. He has a just article here for a look at the Tideman log pairs. It's pretty helped me understand that uh, we are dealing with a graph here, a graph structure, and also that recursion might be useful. So we can just go through each of the each of the um, the graph uh, edges all the way so we can just follow the full depth for each of the nodes so and this as well from this website this was very useful but the text cycle and direct graph so we do have a directed graph however the there's a case here where, where a vertex could uh, point back at itself so that that makes things a, a bit different but what i've done is i took the java code and for example i just dumped it in here a bunch of breakpoints and I kept playing with this and uh, it helped me understand more what how this works just ran it through and tried to understand it and go at it piece by piece so I won't go into this too for lock pairs we will split this in, in uh, to a couple or actually three smaller pieces here we will start by Loop. Have And here we check.
basically what this does is we start the for loop and then we start from zero so we go at the first pair we take the winner and the loser and we log that in so we're going to put that into true so let's just imagine that the first pair is for example zero but then so we log that in make it true and then we check it so we send i here so it will be zero for example we send it in here we check we send it to a check cycle and if that returns true we move it back to false because that means that it returns it actually creates a cycle okay it this this just logs in and checks if there's a cycle that's all that's all we're doing here so then we have so we will create an array array to see track of what's being visited which node has been visited here we will have The so next and final function here and pair. Part of the code, and then we send the visit to the. So we will return the boolean value of this. Uh, well, of your. here if is it this will be so here we're getting into the actual uh, recursion so this will be our base case so if this doesn't check out then this actually mark that as true because we are we are actually so basically after we we started locking in the pairs and we just check here check cycle i for example cycle comes in here there's zero uh, we create a visited the boolean array here we initialize it to false and then we pass in to check like a util pairs zero winner so the first winner visit the so we always going we're only going to start here with the index that's passed in here this is where we actually do the heavy lifting this will be the recursion we just receive that int i and the boolean and the boolean array visited 
and here we expect this would be our, first, uh, our base case so if uh, we've already visited this uh, this vertex will return true then we'll set this to because we're just visiting it now then we will have a loop and we will check if uh, we will look at for example if in the locked uh, to the array this and then we will check uh, check for its uh, for its uh, final node or the second node the one that's being pointed to okay and uh, I don't have a case for this so let's imagine for example that uh, let's get well, let's imagine that there's a there's going to be a cycle so let's say a points to b so a points to b just actually let's let's just gonna write this in here yet points to b points to a okay so that will create a cycle I know it doesn't look pretty, but that's the joke. Points to C. And then C points to A and we'll create a cycle. Not what we want. We want to, want to go around this. So this will mean, for example, points to B. Our first pair will be A, B, for example. Yeah? So Our first pair will be zero. Set this to true. We'll pass. So pair is zero here. That is zero. Come in here. Here. So our array looks some false. False. So we will check. Is it a zero? Is it uh, true? No, it's not. So we move on. We make it true. Here, then we right here. So I was zero, J is zero. Is this locked? No, it's not locked. So we don't go here. We go to and don't take my word for it. It's not locked. But so then we go to J is right. J is one. So if J is one, J is zero, one. So is that locked? So it doesn't go. So it returns the not return yet. It goes to zero. J is so this zero two. Is that true? No, not. So it won't go here. Again, it will return false. This will return false, and so this will false. So this will stand. Okay. So we're locking in. One okay comes true. Okay, so you can imagine that happens a few more times. So the first pair will be on two. Then final the final pair. So that will be two zero. So two here. Let's see what happens. That's uh, so. That's our our step here, our edge here. Okay, so two is here. So let's see what happens. Yeah. So this is our, our next pair. So pair one, is pair two, two so two, zero. We said that to. Here, two comes. Then we send third to here. A pair of winner, so two. Our array. Oh, again. False. So instead of two, is it true? Start from zero. So. Here that's true
then oh here is your visited zero comes in here so we this is the recursion we use this function zero comes in here visited so post get them through well For zero, false, A is one. Good. One. one, is that true? Start in another. Check if this. So, here J was one. One comes here in the power of one falls two. So I I is one now. I one zero false have one one false then we have one two yeah, that's two so we send our array in two here two that's true so we, we've already been here already visited the uh, visited uh, two. basically what this says this has been already visited so return true true and this will unlock the uh, vertex so i hope this makes sense hope I'm confusing myself basically just recursively check and if we come across a node that's already been visited that's uh, already uh, so that's being point. That's already being pointed to. We uh, we unlock that that vertex. Hope that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Basically, we get to a node and it's already been visited. We're not going to be pointing at it anymore. That, that's basically how it works. I have the print function. Uh, I'm gonna have a quick look back here. So okay, so we're gonna create in winner true and uh, candidate index zero. And candidate index. So we will have a we will have a nested with i I'm just gonna type this in uh we'll go we'll go bit
Here, so we see the boolean value winner that we initialized to true, then the candidate index which we initialized to make a four, uh, and then we set for each uh, iteration the winner to true. Then we make another loop for the nested loop. We can look in the locked. Two. Basically, what we do at the node here, checking the candidate column with i. I'm just going to put these in, these in because they're the, the helpful. Basically, here we check for the columns for each of the rows. So, for example, index, uh, so i will be zero. That will be the first row. So we will look at locked of uh, zero, and this is one, one, and two. Basically, what we're doing, we're looking in this column here, the first column. So if there's anything in the first column, that means that something there's any true in the column. That means that something points to candidate zero. Okay. Same here. For example, if there's anything true in column two. This, in the last column here, that means that something points to uh, candidate 2. So that's what we check here. That's why there's J first and I second. So if that is true, the winner is false. So that's not the winner. And as soon as we encounter a true, we can break. Okay? That's what that does here. So if this doesn't happen, true. That's why we, we set it here to true if this doesn't happen. So the effective winner is true. Then we get the candidate index, the row that this uh, that this was uh, that this initially assigned to. So we pass that into candidate index and we break. Then we check again just to just to have this and winner is true. Pass the candidates and can index index that will be our winner. Okay. Hope this makes sense. So. So this just uh, looks through the candidates, compares with the name, and then updates the voters' ranks uh, array. So, for example, you'll have the first uh, the first index will be their first choice, and so on. And then we can also see, for example, zero wins over over one, and two wins over one. Here, for record preferences, we go in the preferences to uh, the array, which is this one, and we increment each position. Where uh, the candidate one candidate wins over the other, that's what we do here. Then for add pairs, we add them to the pairs uh, to the pairs uh, array based on. So we just compare compare the pair equivalent or opposing uh, candidates, and we see which has the uh, higher number of votes. And then we lock that in in pairs like such as these: winner and loser. Sort them out. We use a sorting angular algorithm, and we sort them out. Our target is to sort them out in descending order by winning strength. So winning strength was uh, the difference here. So this is the biggest win. This is the second biggest win. This is the last win. By that's how we get them in there. Then we lock the pairs. So that's where we use the recursion and uh, and we update our our boolean 2D array. Here we just Lock it, lock the edge every time, but then we we use a visited uh, boolean array and we use the other function and we check for each of the nodes. Here we use version and we check each of the each of the um, the, gra the graph uh, possibilities for them. I don't call that. So we just go all the way through through the edges and if we get back to a point that's already been visited, we don't actually add that vertex in, and then we just check. Uh, which of the candidates has no edges pointing to them and that will be the source of the graph and that will also be our winner so i 
Oh, this works. I hope I don't have any. This one. But this. Files. Just one Oh. But it's work. Uh, this has been complicated, but also super interesting and really forces you to get a lot of cool things. And each time I'm just seeing something new, to be honest. Um, yeah, I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. And, uh, looking forward to your comments in the comment section below and if you like this please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like and uh, yeah i'll see you around